He was distributing literature favoring the legalization of marijuana and LSD. Well, what brings you to the temple? We'd like to talk to you. Surely not about mind expansion. Not here. I'm not here to make a profit. I'm here to be a profit. I want to turn everybody on. Let them find out for themselves about the beauty inside their own minds. If you've never taken the trip, you wouldn't know. You haven't seen it. But you wouldn't know, would you? I mean, you don't turn on, do you? Not your way. Then don't knock it. Let me ask you a question. Do you really believe that smoking marijuana automatically transforms an otherwise normal human being into a depraved and raving dope fiend? You may be bound by public policy to enforce the law, but privately now, just between us, don't you think the law is stupid? It's still a law. And what about liquor? It blurs vision, slows reaction, causes mistakes in judgment. At one time there was a law against that too, was there not? That law was changed. When you pick up kids for drinking, you don't automatically classify them as alcoholics. But arrest a kid for smoking marijuana, and you throw the book at him. It's senseless and you know it. With the power of that highly refined intelligence, you can move mountains. You're the big danger we have to cope with, Bentley. I'm not sure you can hear. Either that or you don't listen. Or maybe, like the rest of society, you're guilty. Of what? Deceit. I don't deceive the young people. I don't lie to them. I offer them truth. The youth of today cannot and will not be satisfied with a society based on deceit, where the single standard of an individual's worth is his material possession. They look around them and they see the world they inherited pays nothing but lip service to virtue. They hear greed and cunning denounced from the pulpit, yet they see society praise the men who are the most greedy and the most cunning. They discover soon enough that charity and humility characterize the failures in our society, that aggression and avarice are the mark of successful men. Small wonder young people prefer their own company. Prefer to revert to tribalism than become part of a society that has reduced love to an advertising slogan. Preach conformity, wave the flag. But history isn't made by conformists. To make progress, you've got to break out of the mold. You have to dare to experiment. New ideas never go down easy. The establishment sees to that. It doesn't matter that history proves them wrong. We like to forget that Socrates was forced to drink hemlock, that Galileo was excommunicated, that even Christ was put to death for preaching a new idea. You talk about the young people in America. I don't recognize them. I don't think they exist. I think your kind creates them. You force them into little molds and pop them out like little plastic figures off a production line. You stuff them full of preconceived ideas, praise them for turning out so well. But they're not people, they're machines. Then you wind them up like little tape recorders and send them out into the world to spread another generation of lies. This is a recording. And the ones who escape from your assembly line, the rare ones, you call them delinquents, weirdos, hippies, pillheads, freaks, potheads. You tell them they're sick. They know better. If you're going to live with the rest of us, then you'll have to learn to play the game by the rules. And in case you've forgotten the name of the game, we call it democracy. I don't think we'll have to build new cities. I think we'll take over yours. I think there'll be a day when you'll be in the minority. I wonder how you'll like democracy then. And it won't be long in coming. When the kids start going to the ballot box, you better hope you're ready to draw your pension because all your hysterical laws will be repealed.